Hey everyone, Thursday afternoon. We have a few more questions in the chat. And so I wanted to get on and answer those questions as well. Corinne asked, what type of questions should you ask on your college interview? And that's a really important question because you want to make sure you have really researched the school. It's ideal if you've actually been on um, an admission panel visit, you know, online. So many times you can't get, you know, that actual visit. But if you've been on an admission panel interview uh, where you've been able to hear some of the things about the school, and that way you can ask questions about those topics. They know that you've done your homework. Uh, the more in-depth the question is, about your program, about the school, about something you've read online, the better. So you don't wanna ask questions where, that you could easily find on your own, you know, just by looking the school up. It's gotta be something a little bit more important, something more in depth, something that's not immediately available when you search the school's website online. And make a list of at least five or six questions because chances are in your interview, they may answer some of them before you have an opportunity to ask. And you don't wanna ask something that's already been answered. So by having a list of a few questions, that is going to help you out when they say, so, do you have any questions? And never, ever, ever answer that with, no, I think you've answered them all. Don't do it. Make sure you have some questions. You want to seem engaged. You want to seem like you've done your homework and that you're really interested. You know, you wouldn't, again, you know, I like to go back to those analogies. You wouldn't walk into a house, look around, and if the owner said, oh, do you have any questions before you buy? You wouldn't say, no, I think I'm good. You'd ask questions. A student should be doing that too. This is a big decision. Um, we had another question. Vanita asked, what classes do you take if you're undecided? Should we go comp sci? Should we go biz? What classes? This is a topic near and dear to my heart because if anybody's been in the group for a while, you know how much I think it's important to do that career exploration, understanding your major options before you head off to college. Even one additional class at a lot of schools is as much as a thousand dollars. You know, that's a lot of money to spend on one class and that class may not help you make that decision. So I would highly recommend that you do some career exploration be beforehand. And you know, there are some great ways to tie business and computer science together. So there may be an option that has an overlap there, but without knowing specifically what schools, or what your child wants to do specific to business or specific to computer science, it's hard to discuss that. But if you would like to set up a call um, for that Vanita, like we could talk about you know, your child's options, I would be happy to do that. But career exploration beforehand, so critically important to making that right decision and getting off on the right foot in college. The more interesting classes are, the more they appeal to your sense of purpose, the more likely you are to excel. If you're taking classes you don't like, that you feel are drudgery, that, oh my gosh, I just have to do this, uh, the more likely you are to take shortcuts and not do as well. And it's so difficult to bring those grades up, especially if you're thinking down the road, you may need to apply to a grad school or even to an employer for that first job. So spending a little bit of time up front, determining what major is the best fit, can really save so much, not only in time and money, but also in your child's mental health. You know, that they feel good about what they're doing and they're motivated to do it and it isn't drudgery for them. Um, Caroline asked, where do we find the money? So if you're in the late stages of the game right now, it's senior year and you've already applied, now is the time to hit scholarships hard. And let me tell you, it is a job for your child. I often tell families, I, we get a lot of clients freshman, sophomore year. Um, when clients come to us at that point in time, we can really help with grades and test scores. And grades and test scores are the best surefire way to get scholarship money. Even if your grades aren't the best, knowing which schools will reward you for the grades you do have is important when you start the college search. So there are a lot of things, if your child is not currently a senior, there are a lot of steps you can take to make sure you'll have the money to afford school when the time comes. But it's super important to be proactive with them 
as early as freshman year so that you know exactly the direction to give them, to point them in, so that it can be affordable. But if you are a senior, as I said, it's scholarship time. One of my favorite resources for scholarships is myscholly.com. I'll put it in the comments down below. MyScholly allows you to create a profile, it matches scholarships for you, and you can sort them by deadline to really be likely to attain scholarships through those independent scholarships, you're looking at, you've got to be applying every week. You know, you've got to be doing 10 to 20 scholarships a week. We're talking, that can be as little as two hours. Don't think this is 10 or 20 hours. This is not like your college application essays. A lot of the essays are reusable. They're asking the same type of questions. Some of the scholarships are nothing more than filling out a form. I mean, easy, easy, easy. Um, some scholarships are creating a tweet. Uh, some are creating a video. Your kids on the phone all the time anyways, they can easily do this. It's, it's not as difficult as it sounds, but it is a job. And it needs to be their job because they're the ones who are incurring all of this expense. So they need to get on it as soon as possible. Scholarships are being posted on MyScholly and a lot of other sites year round. So there's never a, oh, it has to happen at a certain time. But the sooner you start, the better. The sooner you start, the sooner you get your awards. Um, if you're the lucky ones who have done the work. So I would definitely suggest, you know, tell your tell your children to go ahead and get on MyScholly. There is a charge for MyScholly. But they curate every scholarship so that you're not going off on a wild goose chase. You're not suddenly getting ads for magazines, that type of thing. Um, and it is a minimal charge for that. And it definitely can be well worth it. But again, I suggest creating a Google Doc. Copy and paste all the links for the ones that are super interesting to you. And then just go in, put your essays in, click the link, transfer your essay or their, your tweet, whatever it is that they're requiring and it makes it a lot simpler. And that Google Doc, then you can keep track of everything that you've applied for, and um, you know, hopefully turn around and see those rewards, awards coming in after that. Um, Teresa and Susan asked questions about volunteering, and they kind of go hand in hand. So, you know, you wanna think about this. You know, when a college is accepting a student, they're looking for a student who's going to add to the community at school. That's why they ask about all your prior activities. That's why they also act about, ask about volunteering. A lot of the activities you do in high school are about you. If you play a sport, it's about you. Sure, it's about the team, but it's really because you love that sport, it's something you enjoy. Volunteering, though, is doing for others. And if you're going to come into a community, what are you going to bring? What are you willing to do? They're looking at it from that perspective. So if you're, if you're going to bring someone in, what do you want to see from them? Well, what they don't want to see is a student who their junior year, mom and dad, after telling them for three years, you need to be doing things before you apply to college. Finally, in their junior year, they say, oh, I need to do something. And they have one year where they've done six things. That doesn't really show the school who they are. And the school knows they did it just as a resume builder. It doesn't say, hey, I'm so committed to helping others that I'm going to come and do this when I'm there at college. So they really want to see length of service. That is more important than six things all in one year. So the sooner you start your child, and volunteering doesn't have to be some nasty, ugly, like, oh my gosh, I dread doing this. And it doesn't need to be every week. It doesn't need to be every month. So finding something your child is passionate about. Maybe they're passionate about animals, and so they're at the local shelter, and they're cleaning out cat cages, or they're walking dogs, or they're doing something along those lines. Um, maybe they're really into computers and so forth, and so they volunteer to teach a computer class for first graders on Saturday mornings. Something along those lines, something that they'll enjoy doing. Um, maybe they're really creative, and so they're going to make um, blankets for the local shelter, or they're going to knit scarves for the homeless shelter. Something along those lines. It doesn't have to be something that they dread. It can be something that takes advantage of what they like to do. 
but starting early. So freshman year of high school, they should be volunteering. Ideally, seventh or eighth grade, they should start volunteering to find out what they like to do. Because if they like to do it, they will do it freshman, sophomore, junior year. And then colleges are gonna see, wow, they've spent the last three years doing the same things, a couple of things. That says a lot about who they are and that they are going to bring that same giving to others when they come to their community, to the college community. So that's really important. And COVID has changed things. But even though COVID has changed things, there are still a lot of opportunities. Um, we've had our students doing a lot of different things during this time, even when some organizations initially have said, we don't want anyone extra here. We've been able to find ways for students to, to be able to um, serve for them, to fulfill, you know, something that they needed to have happen. So there are still opportunities out there. And if you need to talk about that more, feel free to message me. But you want your child to start volunteering as early as possible. The sooner, the better. You want to build up that consistency. They want to see that it's really who you are. You didn't do it just your junior year as a resume builder. But it's never too late to start volunteering and making a compelling case for that is really who you are, that this is something important to you and that you are willing to give time to others. So those are a few of your questions and a few of your answers uh, for those questions. If you have any more, leave them down in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Talk to you soon.